Hello and welcome to a two-part series on the Apprentice S15E from eFlight. Now in part one, I unboxed the plane, I took it out of the box, showed you the different parts about the plane, and gave you a general overview about the plane. Now in this part, however, I'll walk you step by step through the process of assembling the plane, setting it up for the first time, binding it, and getting it ready for your first flight. So let's go ahead and set this plane up. We're going to install the landing gear on the apprentice first and in order to do this you're going to need a screwdriver and a wrench that I'll show you in a moment. Now the first step is to install the front landing gear and that is kind of a little annoying and a little unnecessary. However that is the design and I'm going to show you how it's installed. Now in order to do this we're going to have to take the front spinner off and in order to take the spinner off press down and pull. Okay so as you can see I press down there and pull the spinner off. Put the spinner aside and we're going to take this nut off. This is a 10 millimeter nut. Now I'm going to use a socket extension but you can actually use a regular 10 millimeter wrench to remove this. Hold the prop and turn gently. You don't need too much force with this. Okay so the nut is off okay, and I'm going to pull the prop cover and the washer. Make sure to save the washer and make sure to remember how the whole thing was put together. Okay and I'm going to gently pull the prop off you don't need much force, it just slides on. Now remember when you put the prop back on, remember that the writing on the prop has to be facing forward. So make sure that the writing on the prop is facing forward, otherwise you will reverse your prop and you will not have any thrust. In fact, you'll have thrust in the wrong direction. For the next step, we're gonna take the cowl off the aircraft. And in order to do this, there are three screws. There's one screw on top and there are two screws on the bottom. We're going to take those two screws off and pull the cowl off. Use a small screwdriver. You can use an electronics micro screwdriver. Okay, so the screws are off and it's time to pull the cowl off. Pull, slide the cowl gently off. Don't destroy the foam. Be real careful. Okay, and the cowl is now off. Now we're ready to put the landing gear into the steering wheel assembly. And in order to do this, you're going to install the landing gear into this assembly here. So you want to make sure that this part here, the slide out part here, fits right in there. And the landing gear is going to slot through this hole, which is connected to the steering assembly, which is also connected to the rudder. And it's retained by the screw. So the first step is to unscrew the screw, but don't remove it completely. You want to make sure it's got a bit of thread in there. So make sure that it's just about in there. So our next step is to slot the landing gear in place. Now you have to pay close attention to this process because but there's a little bit of a flat on the shaft on the landing gear. You have to ensure that this screw touches that flat and that's very important. That's the only way you're going to get a positive lock on the steering assembly. So let's go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, make sure that the flat is pointing forward and you're going to slot this in. Slot this through the hole. Make sure it drops and drops all the way in and that it can move around freely but always make sure that it is facing forward. The flat on the shaft has to be facing forward. And then I'm gonna use a screwdriver and tighten that flat up. Tighten it, make it nice and tight. Not too tight, don't strip the threads. And now, if you move the steering assembly around a little bit, you'll see that the control linkage will move at the same time. So that means it's properly locked in place. So let's move on to the next step. Time to put the cowl back on. Insert the cowl on there. Okay, so I've tightened up all the screws on the cowl. Okay, so the prop slides on first. And as I said, numbers pointing to the front. Okay, props back in. Let's put the prop holder in place. And the washer goes in next. Okay, and then you're gonna put the nut on, hold the prop, and then gently hand tighten the nut first to make sure it threads onto the shaft. And I'm gonna use my socket wrench. I'm gonna hold the prop and then use my socket wrench to apply a little bit of pressure and tighten the prop on. Don't tighten it too much. It doesn't need a whole lot of tightness. Just make sure it's hand tight. And last but not least, we're gonna put the spinner back on. And all the spinner does is it just snaps on like that. We're not done with the landing gear yet. We have the front landing gear in, but we've got to put the rear landing gear in. Now this is a much easier process, okay? And in order to do this, all you have to do is squeeze the wheels gently and then insert it into the slot in here, okay? So make sure it goes all the way in and that this horizontal part of the landing gear is seated flush with this plastic plate, OK? 
Okay, so your rear landing gear is now installed and you can flip the aircraft over. Now this will ensure that the aircraft can sit on a flat surface and is level for its initial calibration. Okay, next we're going to work on assembling the tail. Now the tail consists of two pieces, a horizontal piece and a vertical fin. You'll also need the bag of screws and the clevis locks. Now these clevis locks are just rubber tubing and they're inside this little Ziploc bag. You're gonna need those two things and you're gonna need your trusty screwdriver to do this. Now the first step is to put the elevator assembly in and what you're gonna do is slide the elevator assembly in under the control rods and make sure that they line up with these holes here. So there's two holes in here and make sure you line them up with those two holes. Okay, the next step is to put the rudder assembly into those holes and you're gonna use the pilots, the plastic pilots in there to line it up. Insert it around the control rods. Make sure you don't interfere with the control rods. Push the control rods out of the way. You don't wanna to apply too much pressure, but you wanna make sure that it goes in. You have to ensure that this plastic piece here is level with the horizontal piece. You have to make sure that this plastic piece is level with that. There should be no gaps whatsoever. And once that's done, your whole wing assembly should sit firmly. It shouldn't be moving around at all. You should not see any wobble. It should be kind of level, straight, and in place. It shouldn't move around. But you're gonna to need to secure it with screws, and they have provided screws in this packet, as I mentioned. Okay, here's a safe way to insert these screws without damaging your tail assembly. In order to do this, you're gonna to have to flip the aircraft. And in order to flip the aircraft, you need to place it such that there's no pressure on the tail assembly. I've used the inner styrofoam packaging in this case. You can do it on the table surface itself. I've done this on the styrofoam packaging to ensure that I get a little bit of clear Clearance. So I flip this, put this on the styrofoam packaging, and I have the tail assembly hanging off the edge. So it's not touching anything. There's no load currently on the tail assembly, and I don't want any load when I fasten the screws. Okay, and we're going to put the tail assembly in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this plastic piece on the bottom gently, just to ensure that the wing stays level when I put the screws in. I'm going to drop the screws in one screw and a second screw. They do provide a spare screw, so in case you lose one of these, you have a spare. Use the screwdriver, gently tighten it in. Nice, even pressure. Don't over tighten this because this is not a threaded screw, it's a self-tapping screw, no, so not a lot of pressure. Same thing with this screw. Now the next step is to attach the control rods. In order to do this, what we're going to do is slide back the clevis lock, which is this piece of rubber. And what the clevis lock does is it holds the clevis pin in place so it doesn't come off mid-flight. So I've slid that off onto the control rod. And now the clevis is actually going to go on the last hole of the horn. You don't want to put it on any other hole. If it's on any other hole, your throws will be off and the safe system will malfunction. So make sure it is on the hole that is farthest to the end of the control horn. So pull the clevis apart, insert the clevis pin into the hole on the horn, and press it together. And to make sure it all stays together, push the retainer, which is the little piece of rubber tubing, back as close as you can to the horn. Now don't get it too close to the horn, but just make sure that the clevis stays together and that control rod is on. This is the control rod for the rudder. And the same exact thing for the elevator. As I said, the farthest hole to the end of the control horn. That completes the assembly of the tail. You don't need to do any more. The safe system will take care of the rest. So as long as you've assembled it exactly as I told you, you shouldn't need to do any more. Okay, so this is where all the magic happens. This is where the safe system is installed. This is a regular spectrum receiver with the safe component added. There are two servos in here. One is for the elevator and the other is for the rudder. Now the rudder servo is a little more heavy duty because it handles the front steering assembly as well. You also have the 
Y harness. Now this is the Y harness for the ailerons and we'll show you how this works when we assemble the wings. Okay, another thing to pay very close attention to, this shouldn't be a problem, but just make sure to check it before you assemble the aircraft. There are two little dip switches on the inside and these dip switches should be in the off position. Now they are currently in the off position, so make sure switch one and switch two are in the off position, otherwise your safe system will not work properly. Now since this is such a large aircraft, and it's really hard to pop the battery in, flip it over and let it calibrate itself for the first time, Horizon Hobby have included a master on off switch. Now this is very helpful. So you can pop the battery in, put the aircraft level, put it on flat ground and then turn it on. Now make sure to power your transmitter on before you power the switch on, otherwise the safe system will not initialize properly. And next we're going to work on prepping the wings. And in order to do this, let's first get rid of all the masking tape that is holding the control surfaces and preventing them from moving around during transportation. And I'm also going to remove the masking tape from the control rods. And next, we're going to assemble the control rods and connect it to the control horn. Now, in order to do this, as I mentioned, this is still going to be connected to the outermost hole on the control horn here. So in order to do this, same procedure as the elevator and rudder, slide the retainer back and pull the control rod a little bit. So gently line it up and then open the clevis up and you wanna to go to the outermost hole. Push the clevis together. And after you push the clevis together, slide the clevis retainer back on there. Gently slide it back in. Slide it as close to the control horn as you can. Now we're gonna repeat the same process for both wing sections before we put it together. Now since this is the bind and fly version, I'm gonna show you how to bind it to the DX5E. Now this is the most commonly used radio with this aircraft. You can use any other spectrum transmitter, but I'm gonna show you how to bind it with the DX5E. However, if you've bought the ready to fly version of this aircraft, you don't need to bind it, it's already pre-bound. This is only for the folks who've bought the bind and fly version. Now the first thing we're gonna do before we bind it is to turn the power on and you want to make sure that your throttle is all the way down. This is mode two, so the throttle is on the left and I'm going to make sure that the throttle is all the way down. All the other trims should be centered and you're going to hear those long beeps. That means that is centered. All the trims except the throttle trim. Make sure that your throttle is trimmed all the way down. There are no more beeps. There's no more travel left in the trim. If you don't do this, the safe system will not initialize properly and you won't be able to bind it properly. Now, when it comes to the servo directions, make sure that all the servo directions are in the normal position. It doesn't require you to reverse any one of these servo directions. They've got to be all in their normal positions. Okay, so let's go ahead and bind it. Now, before we do this, let's turn the power back off and now we'll work with the aircraft. Now E-Flight provides a bind plug. Now this is a standard DSMX type bind plug and I'm gonna put the bind plug into the receiver and you wanna insert this in the bind port which is the port all the way at the bottom of the receiver. Make sure that the bind plug is all the way in before you power anything on. Next, we're going to install the flight battery, open the compartment, open the Velcro straps, the two velcro straps in here and insert the battery close the velcro straps you don't need to tighten it up because we're not going flying we're just binding it and then we're going to connect the ec3 connector now the ec3 connector is keyed so it can only go in a specific way pay attention to that and let's plug it in when you plug it in it will beep it isn't powered on the esc isn't powered on yet so we're going to do that and let's close up the battery compartment and we're going to flip the aircraft over. Now what you're going to do next is power the aircraft on and when you do that I'm going to show you what's happening inside. You have this flashing orange light on the receiver and it shows that it is in the bind mode. It's flashing very rapidly. Okay and what you're going to do now is hold down the trainer switch which is here. Hold that down and turn on the power. Okay and it goes into the bind mode. You'll see that the transmitter goes into the bind mode and you're gonna release the button. And when you release the button, you'll hear the control surfaces go and you'll see the ESC power up 
That means that your transmitter is now bound to the plane itself. Now I don't have the wing installed, I only have the elevator. So I'm gonna check the elevator. And what, you're, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wiggle the elevator up and down. And as you can see, the transmitter is now bound to the plane. Now one more very important part of binding is to remove the bind plug. Don't leave the bind plug inside the receiver. If you leave it inside the receiver and power it on again, it'll go back into the bind mode. So as soon as you've finished binding, make sure to remove the bind plug. Very important. Now the wing on this plane is pretty large. It's about 59 inches in terms of span, about 1500 millimeters for the metric folks. It's a little challenging to transport and store. Now the two wing sections are about 30 inches each with a wing spar in between them. So there is a male wing spar and a female wing spar. The carbon fiber spar is what gives it its load capacity. Now the recommended technique to assemble the wing sections is to use the wing spar to line up the wing sections. The manual suggests then that you use these pieces of double-sided tape on the inside of one of these wing sections, stick them on the inside, then peel the backing off and push the wing sections together. Now the alignment of the wing sections is maintained using these plastic pieces that fit on both wing sections and these have double-sided tape on the bottom and there's two of these pieces, one for the back and one for the front. So let me repeat, this is the recommended technique. However, if you use this technique, the problem is you have a one piece wing. Now, if you have a large enough pickup truck and lots of storage space, that's not an issue. But for a person like me who doesn't have such a large vehicle or such a large storage space, this is kind of an issue. Now, the method I'm going to show you is a method I've developed to put these wings together and make them such that they're detachable and they can be disassembled for easy storage. Now, you really don't have to follow this method. You can always follow the method that the manual goes with. Now, remember that the method I'm going to show you is not authorized by the manufacturer. It's not authorized by eFlight or Horizon Hobby. So if you do attempt the method that I'm going to show you, attempt it at your own risk. And in order to make this modification, I'm going to use industrial strength low profile velcro now i'll leave a link to the stuff in the description below in case you're looking to buy it now if you don't have access to this make sure to get the thinnest velcro you can get hold of now i've removed all traces of the thin double-sided tape from both the plastic wing alignment pieces now both these wing alignment pieces are shaped differently one fits on the front one fits on the back of the wing sections so pay attention to that before you assemble it first you want to cut a piece of velcro that can fit inside the plastic retaining piece now remember that this piece of velcro is an inch wide and we don't need it to be a whole inch wide so what we're going to do is cut it down the center then we're going to line up and stick this half inch wide piece as close to the edge of the retainer that is the front edge of the retainer as possible. And as you can see, I've stuck it down to the front edge of the retainer. Next, I cut and attached four equally sized pieces of Velcro to both the wing sections. Now you can push the wing sections together and then start with the rear retainer. Keep the wing sections aligned, insert the retainer at an angle and let it swivel in. And once you've assured that it is aligned correctly, Push it downwards firmly to lock the Velcro into place and this joins your wing sections together. Now repeat the same exact process for the front and your wing sections are now put together. They can be taken apart to easily transport and store the aircraft. And next we're going to install the wing onto the fuselage. And in order to do that, the first step is to make the electrical connections. And you're going to plug the male servo connectors on the wing to the female servo connectors on the fuselage. Now, it doesn't really matter which male servo you plug into which female servo. The direction of the throws is controlled by the servo on each aileron. And after you do that, you're going to tuck the wires in and place the wing onto the fuselage. Now, line the wing up with the fuselage make sure it's centered as you can see here i've got it as close to center as possible and make sure that all the logos are face forward so they're facing the nose of the aircraft and next we're going to use the rubber bands to secure the wing hook the rubber band on the rear attachment point and then pull it 
across to the front attachment point that's diagonally opposite the one on the back. So do a cross and do another cross front to back. Now we're going to add two more rubber bands and these are going to be straight instead of diagonal, one on each side. And that completes the assembly of the wing to the fuselage. Now just a tip, make sure that the rubber bands are crossing the plastic retainers and not the foam. The plastic helps to apply pressure to the wing without damaging the foam. Now the aircraft is completely assembled and before you take it out to fly it's very advisable to do a control surface test and a motor spin test prior to taking it out the first time. In order to do this place the aircraft on a flat surface. Now make sure to install your flight battery and plug it in before you place it on a flat surface. Try and place it on as flat a surface as you can and then I'm going to power the DX5E on. Make sure your throttle trim is in its lowest position and make sure all the other trims are centered and then power on the plane using the main power switch. And once you do this, you'll notice that the aircraft powers on and goes through its initial calibration process. In this calibration process, it'll move its ailerons around, it'll move all its control surfaces around and calibrate itself. Now before you go flying the first time, make sure to do a control direction test and you can find specific instructions on how to do this in the user manual. So make sure to take a look at this, test your ailerons and the direction of the ailerons, test your elevator and your rudder. Also check to make sure your motor is spinning and spinning in the right direction. So hold the tail of the aircraft when you do this, make sure to hold it somewhere here when you do this test to ensure that the aircraft doesn't run away from you. So check uh, that your prop's spinning, that your motor's working fine, there are no unusual noises. Do all these tests before you go out and fly the first time. Now it's important to remember that the safe system on the Apprentice only turns on once you throttle up the first time. So when you throttle up a little bit, the safe system comes to life and then will self-level the aircraft. Now make sure to complete all the pre-flight checks that the manual suggests before you go out flying the first time. In fact, you should do this each and every time. It shouldn't just be the first time. It really helps to make sure your aircraft is in shape and that everything works fine before you go out and fly. This brings us to the end of our unboxing and initial setup of the E-Flight Apprentice S15E. If you found this review useful, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to stay tuned for more unboxings, how-to videos and product reviews. Thank you very much for watching.